Okay, YouTube, so this is my review of the Android 4.4 in-dash stereo DVD, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm starting from the beginning uh, in terms of a cold boot, so you guys can see from the time code how long it takes to uh, come up. So um, while that's doing that, I'm going to shift into reverse and just show you real quick that uh, it will go into reverse even though the unit's not booted up completely, so that's pretty cool. You don't have to wait uh, wait for it to boot uh, if you've got a backup camera. So um, there it's basically up. Uh, obviously it hasn't started yet. Any Anybody using Android knows that uh, there's some startup processes and all that stuff that happens. So um, while that's finishing, let me talk a little bit about uh, this unit. This one is a 6.95 inch from uh, the retailer is Pumpkin but uh, it's actually a Clyde unit or KLD so there's only a few manufacturers but there's a lot of different resellers for these so regardless of, of what brand quote unquote you get it's going to be uh, uh, a handful of manufacturers that are uh, actually making the units so anyway so it's a, about a 7 inch display and you can see it's, it's pretty snappy you know there's responsive and all that good stuff it uh, I'm pretty happy with it with it in that respect uh, there are some of my startup uh, items so let me go through real quick what I've got going on we saw the backup camera uh, I've also got a, a dash cam going on so and that's what you see up here it's it's currently recording so if I go over and find the app it's called daily roads that I'm using so um, pull that up here it takes a second so this is the Daily Roads, uh, I don't know if you call it a widget, I guess. Uh, so anytime it's recording, it'll show this. So if I find some video that I want to retain, I can just click that. I don't know why it's not coming up. It usually comes up a lot faster than that. All right, so that's kind of a bummer. Let's try that again. Hmm. All right, well, we'll come back to that in a second. Uh, usually that works well. So, oh, it's not booted, that's why. So, it's com probably competing for some resources. Uh, while that's going on, there's a, an SD card slot here for the GPS card, or whatever you want to put in it, but that's a GPS. Another one here. Um, this one happens to be a 64 gig uh, micro SD. Um, so, officially, all of these units and, and Android in general, I believe, have a 32 gig uh, limitation, but that's it's not really real. As long as you can format your SD card in FAT32, you can go um, a lot larger than that. I don't know what the limitation is personally, but it's uh, certainly a lot bigger than 32 gig. This one's a 64, just uh, for reference. So um, uh, again, we've got uh, Torque. You know, I'm sure every, uh, a lot of you are familiar with this. You can pick whatever dashboard you want and put, uh, you know, gauges and displays and all that good stuff on it. These units, these uh, Android uh, car stereos are a little bit picky about what OBD2 adapters you get um, if they're Bluetooth. Uh, I think if they're USB, you probably don't have much of an issue, but uh, if they're Bluetooth, they are a little picky. So I'll put a link on my video to the one that I use. Uh, works really well. You can see connects really fast um, so and you know, I run the revs up you can see that you know it's working just fine so that's uh, that's that um, for internet connection so you can see that uh, I've got my my weather can actually hold on it's probably oh no that's cool I thought maybe it was connected to my home Wi-Fi but it's not it's connected to the mobile for mobile internet access so I can use Google Maps for navigation and get weather updates and that sort of thing I uh, I use uh, uh, freedom pop uh, I forget what it is but it's a uh, overdrive is basically their um, uh, Wi-Fi hotspot and I think I paid 25 bucks for the hardware and it's three dollars and 99 cents a month for 500 meg of data so it's not a whole lot of data, but I use uh, a firewall or Android firewall to manage what applications can or cannot connect to the internet. So I've basically just pared it down to a few apps that I want 
because um, obviously lots of other Android apps will run in the background and try and you know ping the internet all the time and just gobble up that data behind the scenes so I save it for my maps I save it for weather updates and I'll show you another app that I use um, quite a bit that I I have internet access for so maps um, works pretty well you can see if I go and look for a Starbucks uh, you know there it is Let's see here yeah, so there we go so maps finding Starbucks and obviously it's like any other Google Maps that you use on a on an Android device yep we got that so one thing I'll point out real quick is by default these this the resolution on these units is is kind of um, coarse right it's not they're not super good uh, for running apps and a lot of apps aren't built to run in uh, in the landscape mode they most of them assume you're running on a phone so uh, I'm running a pre-rooted Brom here and I can put a, a, a link to that too in the comments but um, I've added the exposed framework so anybody that doesn't know about that there's a there's a framework which is is really just a uh, module that allows you to plug in all kinds of different modules so here's the framework exposed you guys can google this and figure it all out but I've got a few modules installed that let me tweak my uh, my Android experience and one of those is app settings so I'll let you a little load here for a second I'm, I'm gonna spend just a second here because there's actually a really cool app that makes these units a whole lot more useful and functional than they were so if I scroll down and I find my my maps um, where is that here right here so you'll see that I've got a DPI setting of 175 I can change this and scale the map application uh, I haven't I can have a unique scaling for each application in this case Google Maps I'm using 175 so if I want things to appear bigger or smaller on the screen I can change that and then every time I launch Google Maps uh, it'll have that scaling applied to it so it's very cool very useful and again, there, there's uh, countless modules for the Exposed Framework, um, and I'm using another one I'll talk about in a second. So let me find that here. That is uh, Exposed MTC. So I won't go into all the details. You guys can look at the, uh, the XDA thread on these devices, but there's two components to these units. There's the Android, there's the, the kind of the, the core Android OS, and then there's what's called an MTC app. And it's effectively a hardware interface that uh, helps the the unit talk to the hardware components. You know whether it's the backup camera or the radio tuner and all that stuff. So anyway, one of the the contributors to that uh, thread has written this uh, exposed plugin so that you can change like your preferred music app and you can override your switches if you're going if you're rotating on a lot through the input sources. You can tell it which ones you want it to cycle through, and I'll demo that in a minute. But anyway, the point is that there's some really cool stuff going on in the in the user community and the development community for these devices, so it's pretty exciting. Um, so while we're talking about that, uh, it's it's a it's a car stereo, right? So difference between this and you know, maybe you know ramming a tablet into a dash is that this thing's got. A lot of the pieces built right in so for example it's got a radio tuner and let me see if, you know there it is so it's got a uh, radio built into it a radio tuner built in backup camera like we've talked about uh, it turns on and off with the with the power you know the car so a lot of the things that people have had to get creative with regarding installing a tablet uh, have sort of been handled here and, and thought out for you so I do have steering wheel controls connected and uh, let me see here, um, there's a car service, where's that guy at? Oh, right there. So car service is another uh, app that's been developed by one of the users in that, uh, in that community on XDA developers. And uh, you can see if I'm, I'm clicking the, the volume key here on my steering wheel, or track up and track, oh, sorry, track up and track down. Uh, you can see it's kind of logging all of that. There's some settings you can go in here and tweak, you know, do you, I won't go through all of this, but the point is car service, 
is a, is a nice little app that you can use to tweak your steering wheel control interface. So on that point, um, this is a Jeep. This is a 2013 Jeep Wrangler, uh, and it's got a CAN bus, obviously. So I'm using the pack uh, CAN bus interface to go from the Jeep to the car stereo. And it's the same steering wheel control interface you would use for any other car stereo. Uh, I have the deck, uh, I'm sorry, I have the steering wheel interface set up to emulate Pioneer, I think, because it had all kinds of options, but I'm using the Pioneer em emulation and uh, this deck interprets that just fine. So, you know, again, if I go back to the radio, I'm over here clicking my, my track up and track down steering wheel controls. Here is a cycle through the sources. So again, this is limited to the selections that I had on that uh, one that exposed MTC plugin. So it'll right now it just goes back and forth between my my uh, um, media player and the radio. Uh, but I could I could put whatever I want in there. One of my other steering wheel control buttons I've programmed to uh, a home button, and I've also long programmed it. I'm sorry, I programmed a short and long press of that button to do different things. So a short press goes home, and let me turn this up here. So if we've got the radio playing, uh, let me see if we, oops, sorry. Oh, I think I whacked it out here, hang on. Rotating between sources real quick like that. Oh my gosh. I have really bad coverage here. I'll talk about that in a second. So a short press on the steering wheel control button goes home, but you can hear it, the radio still playing. Now if I go back there and I just want to kill the radio, I can long press that same button, and it'll go back to the home screen and kill the app. So that's kind of cool. Um, so let me see. We've talked about the Wi-Fi, GPS. Oh yeah, my, uh, my dash cam. So up here you can see this is recording. So I've got this dash cam app called Daily Roads running, and it's it runs in the background and it records. Uh, sorry, I thinks I just launched it. It records what's going on uh, all the time on a loop, and there's configuration for how many minutes of video you want to keep and how many videos you want to keep and all that sort of thing. So this guy's just running in the background, uh, and it pops up this widget here. You probably didn't even notice that, but. You can move this around and if, if something happens on the road that I want to uh, archive, I can just touch the retain button and boom, that video is saved off uh, outside of the temp folders which are cleared uh, kind of on an on a ongoing basis. So that's kind of cool. But again, I've got, um, uh, where'd that go? Here, Daily Roads, so we can you know, kind of pull up and see what's going on. My camera is up here by my rear view mirror so you can see if I move my mirror it's it's mounted to that anyway so you get the idea there it's pretty cool uh, but this is the beauty of, of the Android devices you can tweak them to kind of uh, meet the need that you you want um, out of your particular install so um, let's see if there's anything else that I missed oh yeah Tasker very cool app. If you don't have it, you should get it. Uh, if you don't know what it is, it's basically just a, an app that lets you set up all kinds of actions and activities based on events that happen, whether it's the uh, Android OS booting or another application starting or shutting down or whatever. It's just rules-based, and you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. This is what I use to launch my, uh, my dash cam recorder in the background, so I don't have to remember to do that every time I hop in the car. It's just done for me. So anyway, this is just a quick review. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. I uh, hope this helps some people out see what these things are all about and um, and uh, kind of get the word out. It's pretty cool stuff. So enjoy and uh, drive safe, everyone.